What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and tonight we're going to be talking about how to complete both sets of challenges for the numbers events in Cold War and Warzone, some other new content that released today, and even a small teaser for DLC 4. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And also as a reminder, you can save 10% off any order using code DYNAMITE over at GamerAdvantage.com. The link is of course down below in the description and it really means the world to me. Now, you might want to skip around to certain topics of this video, so don't forget about the timestamps that I have linked down below in the description as well. It was confirmed earlier today that the numbers events will last 15 days according to the in-game timer that's currently in Warzone so that makes sense considering the season 5 also ends in around 15 days so I think that's better in comparison to the recent events we had like Hunt for Adler, Groundfall which were a little bit too short and oftentimes broken to the point where players out there couldn't even complete their challenges or unlock some of the exclusive rewards. Hopefully you guys are relieved about that. Now earlier this afternoon Treyarch also tweeted new horrors have emerged from the dark ether hashtag zombies hashtag season 6 so so it's everything but confirmed at this point that the next round based map and the final one I should say will end up releasing with the beginning of the final season for Cold War. The image itself is fairly creepy and has been colorized by some members of the community so you guys can see this a little bit better. A very creepy hybrid between a bit of a Margwa, a Plague Hound, I mean is this a Nova 6 Margwa of some sort? Is it a character that we know about from the intel? Very curious what this creature is but it can end up replacing the dog rounds we're going to get here in this final round based map for the game itself. So. Let me know what your thoughts are on this new creature down below in the comments. We also got a glimpse of a teleporter there in the background. So we're going to be using Omega teleporters to get around from area to area, it seems. Or at least one teleporter that bridges us from maybe the outside to the inside of the red light, green light facility. Really hyped about this map. I know Treyarch's definitely going to deliver a solid conclusion to a story that is still going to continue in a form of a prequel with Vanguard in just a few months from now. But also today in game, we got the release of the Brainwash Tracer Pack Bundle for whooping 2,400 COD points featuring a nice cypher ultra animated skin there for Adler. We then have three reactive blueprints for the Stoner, Street Sweeper, and the MP5 respectively, all coming with Numbers Tracer Fire. And this is similar Tracer Fire to what we had as Death Effects back during Black Ops 4, which also kind of uh, led to some explosion of numbers whenever you killed an enemy. They were badass. Those have returned. We also have the Crash Course Finishing Move featuring a very deadly helicopter that'll very quickly chop somebody's head off. We then have a really cool Neon Number Charm, a Numbers Reticle, and we then have an animated emblem and calling card there to match the theme of this pack. Very fitting for the release of the numbers events here in Black Ops Cold War and Warzone today. So let me know if you guys picked this up down below in the comments and what you guys think about the blueprints that it features. All fantastic weapons and are practically meta for both Cold War multiplayer and Warzone as well. Now the numbers event has brought forth nine challenges for Cold War and nine challenges for Warzone. You only have to complete one set of these to then unlock the base version of the dual wield Psy melee weapon. Now it's worth pointing out real quickly is that this numbers event is the equivalent of the events that we got in the past like Groundfall, Hunt for Adler, Outbreak, Rebirth, events like that. They feature in-game challenges and several dozen cosmetic rewards. This wasn't a live event similar to the Battle of Verdansk a few weeks ago that revealed Vanguard or even the nuke event that blew up the 2020 version of Verdansk a couple of months back. This was just an in-game challenge event that is themed all around Black Ops 1 considering Season 5 is also a Black Ops 1 centric type of season. But in terms of the 9 challenges for Cold War, we first up have Can't Get Them Out of My Head, Get 3 Kills Without Dying, or Recover 500 Health with Food Items in Zombies. So, for the sake of transparency in this video, I'm going to be showing you the challenges unlocked over in Multiplayer, and then the ones over in Warzone. I think doing them in Zombies is a little bit easier than the Multiplayer one, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what I consider to be the tougher challenges that you guys might come across. So, getting 3 kills without dying, I'm not going to recommend camping or playing like a douchebag, but definitely try your best to move around the map, use a weapon that you're comfortable with and don't push too hard or else you're gonna get sniped or hit by a broken weapon such as the marshals now the next challenge is they made me do it five kills with field upgrades or earn field upgrade multi kills over in zombies so the easiest way to do this in multiplayer is using the assault pack just drop one down when you earn it pick it up and get a couple of kills while having that in your inventory now there's other field upgrades that you could try to get some kills with but the fastest way in my opinion is definitely using the assault pack obviously it's much easier to do this in zombies if you just pop ring of fire we then have the challenge known as 21316 
blah 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 blah. So there's more numbers involved in the title of this challenge. It's to get three multi kills in multiplayer or eliminate elite enemies over in zombies. Three multi kills could just consist of three different double kills or three triple kills. Multi kills could be anything from two and up. So that's something that I'd say is probably easier said than done for most game modes. But for a mode like Nuketown 12v12, for example, there's a lot of players running around at once, so it may be a lot easier to go ahead and get a double kill or possibly higher in a match like that. But you know, if you run across somebody on Zoo that's camping with another player, try your best to take them out as fast as you possibly can, and it'll count as a double kill even if it's like two or three seconds delayed in between the two kills that you get. We next up have the challenge known as 7, 12, 8, 11, and more numbers after that. Complete three matches of Zoo or earn objective milestones over an outbreak, specifically three. So I would say three matches on Zoo is faster to complete when you go ahead and do games like TDM, Kill Confirm, but obviously matches like Domination are going to take a little bit longer. You don't have to win the matches at all, just complete them. So don't back out of your games if things are going rough. Go ahead and stay in the match to the very end, and it will then count for you in the Numbers tab menu. The next challenge is, what do they mean? Win a match of Demolition or more Zombies round or Objective Milestones and Xville successfully. So... I'd say the match demolition is also easier said than done if your team isn't too knowledgeable of how to play the game mode itself, but we got fairly lucky on stream earlier this afternoon when we completed all of this, and give this a little bit of time. Unless you like zombies that much, then winning a match demolition shouldn't be that hard. You only have to win two rounds. It's not that bad at all, but of course in zombies, if you want to go ahead and just complete some rounds or an objective milestone in Xville, you can do that as well fairly quickly in just about a round or two. But I know demolition isn't everybody's favorite mode. I've been playing it since Black Ops 1, and whenever it's been brought back, I've had a great time, but to really win a game of it here in Cold War, I'd recommend just body blocking when your teammates are planning the bomb, and if enemies are trying to defuse or detonate themselves, then try to run in a pack, not just running on your own. Make sure you're with some teammates, and make sure the objective is your number one priority, aside from running some decent streaks. Now, the next challenge is 11 to 8 22, more numbers. Get 50 eliminations in multiplayer or slaughter medals in zombies, which involves you getting 5 kills rapidly in zombies. So, 50 kills in multiplayer, could be done in a single game if things go your way, where the enemies aren't sweating, your teammate is above average, things like that could happen, but if you just want to go ahead and take your time and get 10 kills, 5 matches in a row, then feel free to do that as well. There is no rush to doing this whatsoever, or if you want to play some zombies, you can go ahead and get some slaughter medals, which aren't hard to do at all, especially with the Ring of Fire. The next challenge is, what are they saying? 10 kills lethal equipment, or earn lethal equipment multi-kill medals over in zombies. So you guys know I love being Steph Curry with the shots, throwing those Tomahawks all over random games games of multiplayer, but if for some reason you're not a fan of Tomahawks, then feel free to use some Semtex, some C4s, those are a little bit harder to get kills with if the enemies are using Flak Jacket, and that could happen very often, so if you don't want to try out Tomahawks, give other things a chance, be more patient with some of those pieces of equipment, but personally, if you guys do like Tomahawks and don't want to go for those bank shots in regular matches of MP, then try some party games like Double Agent, Sticks and Stones, where Tomahawks are allowed and are easy to obtain, and those are also game modes where enemies aren't going to be camping with Marshals, Stoners, Sniper Rifles, Everybody's on the same page using the exact same items or weapons, so that'll be an easier experience to get some of those Tomahawk kills with. Hopefully enjoy some of the clips there in the background. I was going off here with my favorite piece of equipment that I've been using for nearly 10 years now, ever since Black Ops 1. It's been a ton of fun. But the next challenge is 3, 17, 9, couple of other numbers, requiring you to get 25,000 total score in multiplayer or 25k total zombies essence in round-based or outbreak. Now, I'm going to encourage somebody out there to go ahead and do this challenge in a single match of multiplayer because because it is possible as long as you get a nuke and I know easier said than done 100% but if anybody does this says me proof of doing that in one game I will give you guys something we'll think of something to give away but 25k total score across many matches as you possibly want no rush on this I'd recommend being in some bigger games like domination or hard points where you have more time to get that much score it's really all about going on bigger streaks and also playing OBJ if you're playing a game mode that's related to domination or hard points that's what I would recommend with that one it's not really just about camping in quarters, getting two kills, and then rinse and repeating. It's going on some higher streaks. It's playing more objective-based game modes, helping your team out. You'll get to that challenge in no time. It won't take you that long to get 25,000 total score. But last and definitely not least, we have the challenge 7, 15, 2, 8, a few other numbers, requiring you to get five kills with score streaks or earn support multi-kill medals over in Zombies. So five kills with score streaks really isn't that much, especially when using some of the overpowered score streaks like Death 
machine, hand cannon, war machine. They're fantastic. If you want to go for a gunship, go ahead and do that as well. More power to you. But yeah, you can go ahead and run a smaller score streak like a flamethrower, for example, so that if you accidentally get killed after getting two kills with the score streak, then you can just get right back onto a streak and earn it very quickly again. Luckily, in Cold War, your streak progress doesn't reset upon death. So this one is very simple. As long as you just try to play in a match of colder multiplayer, you'll get to some of the score streaks almost in no time. But that is it for the Cold War setup challenge. After doing this set, I unlocked the base version of the Psy dual wield melee weapon, but I still went ahead and completed all the Warzone challenges just for the sake of doing so. I love being a completionist in my Call of Duty multiplayers, but when it comes to Warzone specifically, you cannot do the challenges in Plunder. It has to be in Battle Royale or Iron Trials, so it's limited to Verdansk 84. You cannot do any of this over in Rebirth either, and the reason why is because you have to go ahead and find these mobile broadcast stations connected to some trucks in nine different areas on the map. As long as you're 100 meters close to that mobile broadcast station, then you don't have to be the one to actually activate the station. An enemy in the lobby can do it for you, but as long as you get close to it, it'll count as a completion. There are mobile broadcast stations in the following areas. We have farmland, ports, hills, boneyard, storage town, airport, military base, salt mine, and the TV station. So I know on Battle Royale it can be frustrating when you go up to one of these and get killed. You have to go to the Gulag, rinse and repeat. It would be much easier to do this in Plunder. I'm not sure why it isn't allowed, but if you did all the challenges in Cold War and just want to see how these challenges look in Warzone, just keep in mind that you don't have to actually do these challenges if you don't want to. There's no reward for doing both sets here with this numbers event. Now, even if your teammates enables one of the mobile broadcast stations and you're on the other side of the map, you still have to go next to the station for it to count for you. It doesn't just register for all players in your party, regardless of how close you are to the station itself. You do have to actually put in a little bit of work and go up to these mobile broadcast stations which isn't that bad and again people out there that are complaining about how easy some of these challenges are look back at some of the warzone challenges from previous seasons people out there were furious on twitter furious on reddit talking about how difficult they were players were playing like scumbags not allowing them to do anything people were camping by objectives ruining the experience this one is very simple if you can hit the button yourself on the mobile broadcast station drive by it fly by in a helicopter do whatever you need to do but keep in mind that this is all doable in a single match of verdance 84 i am aware that the storm in Battle Royale could prevent you from getting to some of the mobile broadcast stations. But if you get lucky enough and if you're quick enough with your team, grab a helicopter, grab some vehicles, and just zoom around to all these locations as soon as you possibly can. You can possibly do it in about 10 minutes or so. It's that simple. I do want to point out that if you end up completing the Warzone set of challenges for the numbers event and not the Cold War ones, make sure you don't have overkill on the class that you want to equip the side melee weapon to. I was confused earlier on stream and forgot that I had overkill on one of my classes. Somebody by the name of Rabbit Cooler. Shout out to you, a brand new member on the channel, for reminding me that Overkill does make you have two primary weapons in your class, which doesn't let you see any of the secondary melee weapons aside from the Riot Shield. So, a little bit of confusion there, a little mistake, but I forgot I pointed out for those out there who are claiming that the side melee weapon is glitched over in Warzone. It's not, it's fully functional and was tested properly for the sake of today's event. But last and definitely not least, the Spectral Side Bundle for a thousand COD points also went live with the release of the numbers event, and that makes sense, right? If you don't want to go and do the challenges for the base version of the size then you can go ahead and get the spectral side which is a really cool looking reactive blueprint for both of them also coming with a gem encrusted watch we then have the slash and stab finishing move a cool looking gameplay gesture the shinobi emblem and even a pale path calling card a fairly cool looking bundle for those out there that again don't want to do these challenges or even if you did do them you still want to have these cool spectral camos on the melee weapons themselves reminds me of i think a spectral type camo that we got back in Call of Duty Ghost. It was very rare. I believe it was only available on Xbox, if I remember correctly. I forgot what it was called, but I'll put it on screen in case you guys do remember what I'm talking about. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave all your thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on numbers events overall for both Cold War and Warzone? How do you feel about the new bundles that released today, as well as the teaser we got from Treyarch about DLC 4, the final round-based map? Really hope you've enjoyed, and peace out, everyone.